April of 2013, your relationship with Jessica was what? Uh, I, we lived together. She was my girlfriend, also the mother of my child. So the, uh, and, and your child was a boy or a girl? A boy. So uh, that boy was your son? Correct. And, and her son? Correct. Okay. Now, um, at the time, or around this time frame, uh, do you recall Jessica working at uh, the Exxon gas station on Sternberg? Yes, I do. And uh, do you remember, sir, about when she started working there? I want to say July, June, middle of the year or so. 2012? Uh, you, you're right. I do believe it was the previous year in 2012, to be honest, yes. Okay. And uh, did, did she have a regular um, shift that she would work? I mean, was there... She tend to work the night shifts. She would occasionally work mornings, but mostly nighttime. And do you recall, Mr. Dyer, the time that shift started and the time that shift uh, if she was closing, I do believe the store closed around 11 o'clock. Okay. So was this Exxon station, this wasn't one that was a 24-hour? No, uh, sir. No. It had a definite closing time. Correct. Now, um, during this time frame, and again, uh, during the time frame, let me ask you this. Uh, what time did, or when, not what time, but when, did you and Jessica start living together? Uh, we had been living together for a few years. Okay. Um, she had stayed with me at a previous house, and then we were in that house for about a year and a half, two years, I want to say. Okay. And uh, did this coincide with the birth of your child, or were you living together prior to that? No, we were not living together prior to that. It was uh, about within the first year of his life that we moved in together. Okay. And in uh, 2013, how old was that young man? Three. Three? Yep. Now, uh, during this time frame uh, that you were living together, uh, were you working or not working? Uh, at the time of the incident, I was not working, but I was working previous to that. I was just in on unemployment at that current time. Okay. So... Uh, putting in context, as you were living together, you did you were employed at some part of that living together, but as we got to April of 2013, you were unemployed. Uh, I was unemployed from like November from in 2012 to that point. Yes. Okay. So about six months. Okay. And and I and I didn't quite hear if you said or not, but were you receiving uh, unemployment assistance at that time or not? Yes, I was. Okay. Now, um, how would you how would you classify uh, your relationship with Jessica during the time frame that you two were living together? Uh, rocky and on and off. Why do you say that? Uh, we both had uh, jealousy issues, I guess. Okay. Um, sometimes we'd fight, break it off, and you know, a few months later we'd be back together. I don't. Sure. Understand. So it was. I, I'm sure there were good. There were good times. Yes. Uh, and there were not so good times. Correct. Uh, not unlike a lot of relationships, right? Right. Now, um, during that time frame, uh, were there issues involving drugs? Uh, yes, we both had drug problems. Okay. And. Uh, were you protective of Jessica in that area? You understand what I'm asking you? No. Not. All right, let me try to ask it a little better. Were there, th were there certain things that you did not want to see her get involved in, in the, in the drug world? Uh, yeah. Okay. Uh, and that's what I meant by being protective of that. Can you, can you describe for the jury, you know, how that would make you feel if she got involved in, in, in whatever... I can't remember what drug it was. Uh, well, we, I personally took methadone, and so did she, and um, she would use heroin once in a while, and that was really what I tried to stop her from using. I mean, the pills were hard enough, and I just didn't want it to go any further than that, I guess. Okay. How would you be protective of her in that, in that regard? 
we we fought a lot about it. Uh, there was times where I flushed things down the toilet and called said person that she was getting it from and threatened them. I guess. Okay. So you're that serious about it? Yeah. I want to I want to focus in on uh, April 26, 2013. Okay. Yes, sir. It's a Saturday. And uh, do you recall uh, Jessica having to work that particular night? Uh, yes, she worked about 2 or 3 o'clock in the afternoon, went in. Okay. Now, prior to that, just if we could kind of go through your day a little bit. Prior to that, did you guys spend any time together? Uh, we went shopping, um, and then she dropped me off at my parents' house before work. Okay. And was there anybody else with you? As Evan was with us. And that is that was your son. Yes. And do you recall, sir, about what time uh, that uh, Jessica dropped you guys off at your parents' house? I want to say like two thirty ish, two two thirty ish. Okay. Now, um, obviously, Jessica did not stay with you uh, for dinner. Is that correct? No, it was just she just dropped me off and then she went to work and me and my son stayed there to eat dinner with my family. Okay. Now, could you describe for the jury, sir? Uh, the, the things that you and Jessica shared, i.e., um, you know, vehicles and whatnot, what, what, what did you share amongst the two? We shared a Mercury Sable, and we also shared a cell phone at the time. Okay. And so on the day, on this particular day, in the afternoon when she dropped you and your son off, uh, did you keep the car or did she? She took the car, dropped me off at home or at my parents house and then I kept the cell phone so I would have it at home just in case anything would happen. Was that your, I'm assuming then you didn't have a landline? No, no. The cell phone was your only way of communication? Correct. Um, I want you to take a look at uh, People's Exhibit 81. Can you see that okay? Yes, sir. And uh, can you describe what that is please? That was the car we shared at the time. Okay, so back in 2013 this was the, this was the vehicle that you and Jessica had in common. Correct. Okay. Mr. Dyer, was it was it common when Jessica went to work at night, uh, would she wear a hooded sweatshirt? I would say most of the time, yes, because she would have to fill the coolers, so she always kept it, even if it was warm outside, to work in the coolers. Okay. At the Exxon. Uh, and was that was that part of like the closing? Were there some duties, some closing duties that were stocking routine? the shelves, keeping the coolers full, so then people in the morning didn't have to do it. Clean okay. Up. It was she. I mean, was she a hooded sweatshirt person? I mean, some folks like the crew neck, some folks, you know, like v neck. She she liked hoodies. Yes. Okay. Um. Now, did you, were you able to talk to her? Uh, on the phone that particular day or that night? I had called her about 8 o'clock once I got back to our house uh, just to let her know I was back and then um, I called her around 9 30 10 o'clock to ask her to bring some milk and a few other things home and that was the last time we talked to her. Okay so that kind of answered my, my next couple of questions here so once at 8 p.m. yes and then once at 10 p.m. Right around 10, yes. Okay, or around 10, I'm sorry. I think that's what you said. Um, when you when you talked to her at, uh, let's take it one at a time, when you talked to her at 8 o'clock, was there anything uh, in her voice that made you feel uncomfortable, or that she seemed troubled or, or worried? Or anything no, like her you? usual sunny disposition. She was, nothing seemed wrong. She was happy. Okay. Um, did she mention to you anything about being bothered by anyone? Uh, and I'm sticking with the 8 o'clock time frame. Being bothered by anyone around the 8, at 8 o'clock hour? No, sir. Uh, fast forwarding to the conversation you had around 10 o'clock that night. Again, I'll ask you the same question. Anything in her voice or demeanor that suggested to you that there was something wrong? No. Uh, did she mention anything about, again, at that point in time, being bothered or you know somebody creeping around or anything of that nature? No, sir. Uh, all right. How would you um, classify or uh, how would you rate the relationship that Jessica had with her son? 
a 10, being good. It's a very good relationship. She Just, loved him very much. Was that, I mean, obviously you spent more time with her and your son than, than any of us. Um, did she ever express a desire that she wished she never had your son? Not to me, no. Did you ever get the sense that uh, she didn't want anything to do with your son? No. Was there any any fear whatsoever that you experienced or saw where you felt that um, she just didn't want to be a mom anymore? No. Do uh, you feel that she would have, she would just have upped and left, uh, leaving her son behind? Leaving her son behind, no. You, is there any scenario or possibility that you've experienced in your relationship with Jessica Herringa that would give you that inclination? No. Is she the type of person or... or do you get the impression that she was a type of person that would just get up and leave and, and not tell anybody anything? No. She's got a family, correct? She's very close. She was very close with her sister and pretty close with her mother. If anybody, I do believe she would have told her sister she was leaving. Okay. As you sit there today, sir, uh, have you heard either directly to you or to anybody related to Jessica about her whereabouts? No. Nobody's reached out to you via phone or internet or anything of that? No, sir. Would it be typical of her to leave? Um, well, let me ask you this. Even though she was working and you were unemployed at, at the time of receiving assistance, were you guys doing, you know, really well or just getting by? We were getting by. Kind of paycheck to paycheck kind of thing? Yeah. All right. We've got one, one last question for her, and I, and I hate to ask this, but I've got to. Mr. Dyer, did you have anything to do with her disappearance? No, I did not. Are you involved at all in, in the disappearance of Jessica Heron? No, I'm not. All right. Thank you. I have no further question. Uh, Mr. Dyer, this is a very difficult time uh, an occasion for you, is it not? Uh, yes. Okay. Uh, Mr. Dyer, uh, I, I promise you, I, won't, I may ask some questions that may be painful for you, to you, but I won't ask you anything that I don't absolutely have to know, okay? Okay. Okay. And we'll, we'll go from there. Let's start with, the, with an easy one. You mentioned your son's name, correct? Yes. Would you spell your son's name for, because it's an unusual spelling, correct? Uh, what is, why do I have to spell my son's name? Because I you feel... you mentioned it on the record? And, and I just want, because when they type it up, they want to know how to spell it. That's all. Is that okay? It's Z-E-V-Y-N. Okay. Thank you. Uh, we don't need to know anything else about it. Okay? okay. All right. Now, this is your son and Jessica's son, correct? Yes. And you have another daughter, is that correct? Correct. All right. And she's older than your son? Yes. Is, it, is this other daughter with Jessica? No. All right. This is with another lady? Yes. And were, were the two of you married? Me and my daughter, daughter's no. mother? Yes, sir. Uh, no. All right. Now, you mentioned that your relationship with uh, uh, Jessica was, I apologize, Miss Herringa. Your relationship with Miss Herringa was that you were boyfriend and girlfriend, basically, correct? Correct. But were, were you all, weren't you also engaged for a time? Didn't you ask her to marry you on a couple occasions? Yes, all right. I did. So, so it was a... You had a child together and you asked at least twice to marry her, is that correct? Correct. All right. Was there any planning ever done for that wedding? More wishful, I guess hoping. Okay. <laughs> she, she never really gave me a specific answer. All right. Um, you had uh, some, some you, you had a relationship where, where the two of you are trying to make a family with your son, correct? Yes. And, and there were some difficulties, am I correct? Correct. One of them was money. I wouldn't say that was a problem, but yeah, the money was tight. Okay. You were unemployed for, would you say, six months during the course of that relationship? Correct. And, and you received unemployment? Correct. And, and was, 
Was Ms. Herringa uh, employed during the entire time you were together or the periods where she wasn't employed? Uh, she was, from the time our son was born, she didn't really work until the last like six, seven months before her disappearance. So that, that made it stressful, I, I assume, given the money situation wise. Yeah. And when she did start working, she worked at a gas station? Correct. Do you know, do you know what her hourly wages were at the gas station? Was it minimum wage? I couldn't tell you off the top of my head, okay. no. But it, it wasn't a high paying job, would you agree? Correct. Oh. Uh, so uh, at the time that you last saw her, were you both working at that time? No. Okay. She was working, but you were not yet? Correct. All right. All right. Um, and you, you mentioned that, that part of the competing for your for income, I assume, was, was a, a drug situation. I don't. Can, can you rephrase that, please? Did you tell Mr. Hilson that you were using methadone? Uh, yes. Did you tell Mr. Hilson that, that Ms. Herringa was using methadone? Yes. Did you tell Ms. Mr. Hilson that uh, Ms. Herringa also used heroin? Correct. Uh, and I assume none of that stuff is free? Correct. Uh, were there other drugs involved? Cocaine, methamphetamine, alcohol, uh, marijuana, anything else? Marijuana. All right. And, and all that's competing with, for your income, correct? Correct. Marijuana's not free either, correct? Correct. And uh, I, I've heard very few individuals tell me that using drugs helps a relationship. That that's, it's causes more friction within the relationship. Did you find that to be the case? Definitely. Okay. Uh, this was, did Ms. Herringa have a second child? No. This was her first child? Correct. How old was she when she had your son? 22, 23. Okay, so, so for, from my point of view, still a young person. Correct. Okay. Um, and I understand that she was close with her sister? Yes. Uh, but in terms of family support from, from her side of the family, were, were her mom and sister or her grandmother over helping and giving advice and providing counseling and babysitting and all that stuff? Her mom would help okay. once in a while. If you're asking if they were at her house on a daily basis helping take care of her son, no. Yeah. Okay. Um, <laughs> you mentioned that uh, on a scale of one to 10, uh, Ms. Herringa had a relationship with her son that was a 10. Correct. What would you, how would you characterize your relationship with her mother? My relationship with her mother or no, her? No, hers. Uh, it, was, it was a good relationship also. I would say eight, nine. Okay. They had their rocky moments, but. And there was also, there's also a grandmother involved, correct? Uh, yeah. Okay. How would you rate their relationship? Uh, we really, they lived in Grand Rapids, so we only kind of seen them on holidays, but every time we seen them it was very loving. Okay. So they had a good relationship with your grandmother as well? Correct. Okay. And there, was a, there are also people who are significant in the home. Your daughter, I would assume, would come to visit? Yes. How would you rate their relationship, Ms. Herringa and your daughter? That was good. They got along. The number? I would say an eight. Okay. And uh, your former significant other, the, 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 your daughter's mother, I assume that since the daughter's coming over, Ms. Herringa and your daughter's mother would have contact on occasion? Uh, limited contact, but yes. Okay, and how close were they, would you say? They did not get along. Okay. Uh, were there other folks, you, you mentioned the sister has a good relationship, were there other folks uh, that were within the nucleus of that family that you were trying to put together, that were people that were you were involved in on a regular basis? My family, uh, my mom, dad, brother, sister, um, her family, um, that's about it. I really kind of just kept to the family. Okay. Tell me about uh, what you know of Ms. Herringa's uh, uh, what, did she, what did she think of her, her did she, was she satisfied in her job? Did she get along well at the job as far as you know? As far as I know, yes. Okay. Uh, there, there wasn't a, a point of friction within the job? Um, not to my knowledge. So she wouldn't come home and say, you know, that so-and-so, she's giving me a hard time again today, and, or anything along those lines? Just regular, you know, everybody gets frustrated at work. I mean, just regular daily venting, I guess. Nothing specific stands out. All right. 
So uh, thank you. Uh, on, the, on the issue of, uh, of the drug you should, you, you mentioned that you knew the person who was supplying Jessica, I'm sorry, I, I, I don't mean to be involved, Ms. Harrington, you knew the person who was supplying her with heroin. I did not personally know him. I only knew him from a phone number and a brief conversation on the phone I had with him. I've never physically seen him or met him. It was just a literally a 45 second conversation where I was screaming at him on the phone. How'd you know it was him that was supplying her then? Uh, text messages in the phone. Okay. I so kind of pieced it together. He was sending text messages to her? Yes. Yes, oh. yes sir. All right. And so you, you were able to call and, and let him know what you thought about that? Correct. Oh. So, uh, so in other words, well, let me, let's be fun. she didn't need you to get her heroin. She, she had her own source. Correct. You know how many sources she had? I do not. Some she kept from me. Do you know how often she used? I do not. Do you have any, do you have any idea what the guy looked like? I assume it was the guy. Uh, I, yeah. you know what he looks like? No. Uh, you mentioned that as a result of this, this, the drugs, that the two of you fought a lot. Yes. Okay. Was she any happier about your drug use than you were about hers? I would say no. She wanted you to stop using or stop using as much? or what we, we had both talked about stop using altogether. Did she ever have to uh, flush any of your marijuana down the toilet? No. Um, there were fights, and, and I assume drugs were part of it, but there were fights about other issues. Uh, did you argue about chores? Yeah, any couple will. Babysitting duties and who had to do what, that sort of thing? Not necessarily babysitting and chores, I would agree with, yes. Was she, was she, did she ever complain to you about um, your not, uh, uh, Providing enough uh, interaction with, with your son, with the, your son? Yes. Uh, there was also, you also mentioned there were, uh, that you're off and on. Were there times that you moved out or that she moved out? or? Before we lived together, it was very off and on. And once we cohabited the house, I would say it was on. There was no choice. We really, either one of us didn't. I have nowhere to go. Do you, do you uh, I'm relating that because I just remembered a question I forgot to ask you. Do you remember a situation where Ms. Herringo was pregnant with your son and her mother put her out of the house? Mm, yes. She was living with her mother at the time? Uh, yep. Okay, and this is the mom who has eight or nine? Yep. Okay. So, uh, okay. Uh, there's all kinds of fights, uh, range from not talking to the screaming and beyond. Uh, do you recall if uh, you and Miss Herringa, uh, did it ever become physical between the two? Uh, one time it did become physical, yes. You mentioned that you, you you mentioned that she had a, uh, a, a ten out of ten relationship with your son. Correct. All right. Uh, did she ever mention to you that she thinks your son has your temper? No. Okay. Uh, you mentioned uh, jealousy issues. Correct. To your mind. I mean, was it, were they both ways? She, she questioned your fidelity and you questioned hers? Yes. Uh, in your heart to heart right now, do you think you are accurate? Do you think there's a reason for you to be upset in terms of her fidelity? Can you clarify? Do you think it was somebody else? No. You don't think so? I think she was talking to other people. I don't think there was somebody else in a relationship with her, no. I feel she may have been talking and flirting with people, yes. Okay, so when you say people, you mean plural, more than one? 
I don't have specific, so I say people. You, you notice her text messaging them, correct? That's how you found out about the heroin dealer? Uh, yes. Did you notice any text messages that, that led you to believe that there's a problem? Well, there's a fidelity issue here? No. Did Ms. Herenda keep what I call a journal? You know uh, what I'm talking about? A journal, yes. a diary, that sort of thing? Yes, she did. Uh, and, and would you describe it for us, please? It's a journal. Is it, is it a notebook or is it a... Is it's it, an actual journal, like a book. Okay. And is cover on it and everything? Yeah. And does it say her, my journal or my diary on the front? Not to my knowledge, no. I when think it was just a leather binding book. Okay. When did you discover it? I've known about it the whole time she was writing in it. So you saw her writing in this document? Correct. Okay. Uh, did, you, uh, did you ever take the opportunity to look in the document to see uh, what was being said? Not until after she was gone. Okay. After she was gone, did you, you look through the document at least to see what she was saying? I thumbed through it, yes. Are you familiar with uh, Ms. Herring's handwriting? Yes. Was there anyone's handwriting in that document other than Ms. Herringa's? Not to my knowledge, no. All right. So, so are you could, when you know better than any of us, are you convinced that that is in fact her journal? Yes, I am. And, and she was keeping information. She write things in there. Yes. Okay. What happened to the journal? Uh, I turned it over to police, and then they did what they needed to do with it, and then they gave it back to me, and I'm not quite sure where it is right now, to okay. be honest. But you did let law enforcement know that you had this document? Correct. All right. Um, Mr. Dwyer, during uh, Mr. Hilson's opening, he mentioned that, that uh, Ms. Herringa had $400 cash in her purse. I think that's what he said. I may be wrong, but let's assume that is correct for now. Do you know why she had that much money in her purse? Uh, it was, she just cashed her check, and I do believe that was rent money. Okay. And that would, that would have been the month? That, was that the amount that rent was for your part? Uh, no, a little less than rent, but... Okay. Now, this place, I assume you and Ms. Herringa lived in your own, and your son lived in your own place? Correct. Okay. Uh, did you have another place to go if you were to lose that place? That you could live independently with your son? No. So you would have needed that rent money for to keep the roof over your head for you and your son, correct? Yes, but I knew the landlord, so there would be times where we didn't have rent money and they would let us slide by and, you know what I mean, we worked out, I've known the landlord I was living with for several years, so uh, sometimes rent would not be paid, you know. Would he let you make it up if it was late? Yeah. Okay. But in the end, that's what you did in the end, you caught up with Correct. Correct. I assume that you approved of how uh, Ms. Herring uh, mothered your son. Yeah. Was this a, 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 a difficult experience for her, given that this was her first child? I guess I don't know what you mean. I mean, <laughs> Raising a, a infant, one year old, two year old, can be frustrating for veteran parents. I mean, you do it three or four times, it's still frustrating. This was her first time. Did you notice if she found any frustrations in doing that? No. You didn't think she was frustrated at all? No. You mentioned your, uh, Ms. Harry that had her cell phone. Did you, did you know that she had a second cell phone? I learned that in the prelim. Okay. So after, after the fact? Correct. correct. Okay. Um, did you, were you made aware, did, did she say anything about uh, taking money from the store for herself, stealing? Yes, I did know about that. Okay. What did you, what did you know? Uh, there was one point where I had confronted her um, after I had talked to whoever was giving her stuff. Um, I, we talked about it and trying to, you know, figure things out, and I was asking her where she was getting money. 
to support her habit, um, and she said that she was all ever she was doing taking money from the store to buy her heroin. I have no further questions. Thank you, Mr. Blair. Thank you.